I right, top billing and who that nation. You know, I've been on the search trying to find my man Drew Breezes some more weapons so the Saints can go ahead and go on this run and send this man out with a championship just the way he deserves to be sent out, right? So all it took was an official 4.43 seconds for me to confirm the shit that I've been saying the entire season. I think my man Justin Jefferson is as talented as C.D. Lamb and Jerry Judy. And man, could he fall to the Saints? Just think about it. Who would have ever thought that Calvin Ridley, right, would end up being, what was he? Yeah, the 26th pick in the draft, right? Calvin Ridley, as good as a Justin Jefferson and all those guys that I mentioned before right there, even he was the 26th pick. So you just never know how the draft will fall. So if somehow Justin Jefferson is sitting there when the Saints end up picking, run that bad boy like he ran this 40-yard dash right here. And I said it before, I felt like Justin Jefferson was being pigeonholed as a slot receiver. Yeah, how many slot receivers run in a 4-4-3, right? Officially, unofficial time of 4-4-4, officially went to a 4-4-3. Look at the gate. Look at him, put, pick him up and put him down. You want to just beholding that to the slot? Think about this guy on the other side of Mike Thomas, sometimes working in the slot, Working on the outside, he's six foot one, so he's not a slow dude by any—I mean, a short dude by any stretch of the imagination. We know he has wheels. We know he has that muscle relaxability. The way he runs his routes, very imaginative. Uh, great hands, man. As a matter of fact, man, let's go ahead and get into a film study, man. You know, I love me some Justin Jefferson. All right, so we already knew that Oklahoma had the dumbest defensive game plan in the country uh, when they play at LSU. Uh, just dumbfounding was how they tried to run this against this type of set, right? So, obviously, you got your normal 11 personnel, motion and empties, what LSU normally does. So, what this does is this allows for a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups. But especially if you can be really fruitful in targeting these one-on-one -on -one matchups if you do dumb shit like Oklahoma was doing right here. So, look at the inverted coverage. You're going to have your overhang nickel defender here. He's going to roll coverage to center field uh, while there's a bit of a – outside matchup zone going on. So this will get Justin Jefferson matched up one-on-one -on -one with a free safety. And they're thinking that they can do this because they, just like just like me, right, I came into the combine thinking Justin Jefferson will run a 4-5 or five and that will be good enough. But if you really look at certain instances, when he really gets it going, man, he was straight moving on people, right? Even he said himself he surprised himself with a 4-4, four -four, right? So – Imagine this right here. Inside fade, of course. Inside fade, he's already done because he stepped up. and He's not going to be able to turn and transition his hips with Justin Jefferson, especially the way Jess Jefferson's able to uh, vary his route speed and his proprioception. Look at this space. And look at him pick picking him up, putting him down, and creating separation. Look at the separation anxiety just from a little bit, right, on the transition from taking it up, Phil, to the inside fade on the angle. Picking him up, putting him down, right in and there. We should be like, okay, either this safety is super slow or Justin Jefferson has some wills. And it's the latter. The guy just has some serious wills. That's just pitch and catch. That's just too easy, man. Can you imagine this? Like, even on the inside with the New Orleans Saints, right? So you can play him all around. You can play Mike, isolate Mike as a backside Z receiver type, Michael Thomas. I mean, you can move this guy all around and let him do some of the stuff that Michael Thomas does, right? So if Michael Thomas is ever out or needs to take a breather or whatever like that, you can put him as a bike backside ISO player, but he can run the slot. Yeah, he can be your X receiver tethered to the line of scrimmage. Man, you can run reverses with this guy. He's just a Swiss Army knife, man. He's got the basis of just a regular superstar receiver as well, so it's, it's kind of rare in that in that manner. All right, same exact scenario here. This is actually the play before the last one we just saw. And you can see that this takes away the post, right? They're not running that many different routes at LSU, which is one thing that we're going to have to see from him as a route variation throughout running throughout the NFL tree uh, like Sean Payton's offense is. However, we just know that he has some really good route running ability to him. But this does take away the post by rolling coverage this way. But you can see here in a – in a 50-50 exchange situation, right? He can go either way, 50-50 exchange situation. Him transitioning this route, look, bang, muscles relaxes him. 
Got him real good, too. Hitting with the muscle relaxer, right? Really sold it. Really sold that inside fade. And they came back with the inside fade, right? The very next play. But you can see the transition here. This kid can get open. And Drew Brees can't do something with that. You guys up there crying, Drew Brees can't throw the deep bomb, man. Well, give him somebody who can actually go and get this shit, right? Trey Quan Smith? Man, get the fuck out of here. One thing we're going to have to look for with Justin Jefferson is the ability to beat press man coverage if he is playing on the outside. Uh, beating press coverage is not necessarily in vogue on the inside because you're usually not on the line of scrimmage. So you're usually working with a little bit more space. However, man, his ability to just go and get it, right? He's a go-getter. We see right here, uh, post-will concept with him on the inside, working with Jamar Chase, who's running the post. Now look at it. His ability, right, to, to not lose speed and momentum. His ability to not lose speed and momentum when he's transitioning in his route, gives you half a man, not much to touch right there. Stronger than you think as well, right? Stronger than you think, able to get you on his inside hip. But his ability to track and locate, man, is phenomenal. And the dexterity, body control, you have to absolutely love it, right? So we saw him, Ken Griffey catch the last one here. On this one, he does, safety does a poor job of getting there in time. He was occupied with the post route. But look at him. Turn his body to locate. Turns on the inside. The nickel corner is not locating. But look at him. Turn and contort. He's mastered this catch. He's done it so much, man. All right, similar deal right here. Riding the seam, going against the nickel corner. Burrow puts it up. He's already tracking. Not sure why this DB is not tracking yet, but it is Texas DBs outside of my kid, Kenyatta Watson. These guys aren't tracking the ball, but he's tracking it. Look at him. Same type of deal. Turn and contort his body. Des Bryant used to do a lot of that right there. I like that, man. That's some. That's a tough thing to defend right there. If he's able to turn and contort his body and get two hands on the ball, then he's strong all the way through the catch. Nasty splits. He's running a submarine flat route, and his ability to work after the catch is another thing that's going to be dynamic in the NFL. So we see Tanner Muse here. You guys know I had to include this, right? Y'all know I had to do it. Tanner Muse, look at him be creative after the catch. Now, he does this a lot. Jerry Judy gets a lot of uh, accolades for this, but Justin Jefferson is the man with it as well. Look at this start and stop. Look at that. He's able to bog down, really sound like he's going upfield. And Tanner Muse is unable to control his, his limbs. Look at that. He lost control of his limbs and his bowel movement and everything. Yup. He hit him with the stool softener. That's even worse than the muscle relaxer. Oh, look at him. Down goes Tanner. Look at him. Oh, oh, oh. Bowel control. Look at that. Lost control of it. Nasty, bro. Get this man the ball out there and look at him lower his shoulder, right? Uh, 200 pounds, lowering his shoulder, physical. He has the finesse stuff about him. He has hands. Uh, he can go run in 50-50 in, um, exchange situations and, and freak you out of that. And he can also go up with the contested catches. What can't this kid do? And he ran a 4-4-3. Another one of his patented whirling dervish catches. We see him in a reduced cut split here, running a deep over route. And doing what he does best, which is pretty much everything. Freaks him off the line of scrimmage. Look at that. Varied his route speed. Muscle relaxed him. He's already on the outside hip. He has a step on the guy. Now look at the route transition to further create separation anxiety. I think the dude's trying to hold here. Burrow puts it on him. Of course, the guy's not going to track. Jefferson tracks, but he's able to Hit the whirling dervis. Body control. Hops are crazy. Decent size at 6'1", 200 pounds. I think he's a perfect scheme fit for the Saints, right? So, man, imagine if the Saints could come up with this guy, right? But this is going to be – you're going to also need something in the short term, right, for, for Drew Brees. And, of course, Justin Jefferson will be beyond that with Mike Thomas um, if you were to get him. But, man, somebody like an Antonio Brown – I know he's a head case or whatever like that, but he would also fit well with these type of receivers. Imagine if you had an upgrade where you added both Justin Jefferson and Antonio Brown in one offseason to go with Mike Thomas and Jared Cook at a tight end. And, of course, what you do in the run game and then with Breezes at quarterback. 
I think that's all you need right there, right? To give yourself a fighting chance when you get it, when you get from these physical teams, right? Having some phys- having another physical receiver like Justin Jefferson to take the pressure off of Mike Thomas, I could go a long way. But also gain an explosion with a Justin Jefferson who can get downfield and then an Antonio Brown as well. But often not, if you don't get that offensive line situation fixed, right? Uh, at a couple of the guard spots, right? At least at we'll get on that another time so I still want to get on the offensive line to really show you but you know how I feel about Andrews Pete and sometimes Larry Warford's a little suspect as well but it is what it is man but let me know what y'all think man y'all think the Saints if they had a first round pick and and, and he, this guy was available even if there's some other guys available at some situations maybe some defensive backs the Saints could use as well would you sprint up to the podium to turn in a pick for Justin Jefferson let me know in the comment section alright that being said, you already know what time it is. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Who that nation? Tell him that your boy Murph is back covering the Saints up on his own platform where he can do what he wants to do. <laughs> y'all know how I get down if y'all saw me and remember me from back in 2013. All right? And it's your boy Murph, the underground king, top billing sports, and I am out. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.